You're listening to the Academy Podcast, presenting an innovative curriculum for personal growth. Sit in on exclusive conversations with influential people as they share the secrets that made them the front runners in their industries. Now, here are your hosts, Austin and Kagia. Welcome to the Academy with Austin and G. I'm G. He's Austin. What's uh, good? What's going on, Chief? Chilling, man. How you feeling? Man, I'm good. Down here in Huntsville, Alabama, dropping my boy off at college. Man, what, what college, man? Tell everybody what college. Man, this dude is at Oakwood University. To play Oakwood. Get my master's degree. That's it, man. Oakwood University. OU. He's an OU man now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, and, and look, they <laughs> they was like... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm along with him on every step, right? And then at right. some point, I'm going into this room with him for him to take his photo ID. And the people was like, uh, we don't need the parents. <laughs> you want your like, own ID? Yeah, yeah. So so, so now I just got finished, you know, making sure the finances were good and all that stuff. Right. I, I brought him down here. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> you know, we've been there every step of the way. But right. at some point, it was like, look, we don't we don't need you anymore. <laughs> this is that's enough. You, you can wait outside, and I'm like, yeah, do, do, they do, the parent, do, do they do like the little parent um send off anymore? Do they do that? Oh, with COVID, with, with, with COVID, yeah, yeah. The parent send off used to be a major thing. Oh, you've done it two times though. Yeah, man, but yeah, no, this time is 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 wait, yeah, gee, everything different. Gee, are do you have an empty nest? Oh man, yes, turn. Sir. Are you turning this room into a workout facility? Is it going to be a new room for for what? <laughs> before, before he moved out, like he was out of town, right? And yeah. I got my new um, computer in the mail. Oh. I set it up in his room before oh, he over. moved out. Yeah, <laughs> so he's gonna sleep in the guest room. Back, back up his stuff. There was already <laughs> half of my studio set up in his room. So that's wow. where I be recording from, man. Yo, that's crazy. That's crazy. So yeah, yeah, we're ready to use that room, man. <laughs> That's what's up, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. So, uh, look, man, we 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 got these uh, photographers we're talking to today, and look, yeah. I don't do. That's all I do in my family is I'm the one that everybody's saying, "Would you get out of my face?" You know, even okay. at church, man, all my members. Why are you always taking pictures? Man, I be taking yeah. pictures. Of everybody, dude, <laughs> with my iPhone. Yeah. And so, man, today, man, we talking to some real photographers. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they think about us people that's always in their way. I might ask him about it. But um, the first up, man, we got my brother Roland in the house. Roland. Uh, extraordinaire. Um, um, we want to bring hey, him. Hey. What's going hey, on? Hey. What's, what's up, up man? Queen? Hey, listen, man. What's up, Austin? Hey. Man, I'm good, man. Hey, listen, listen, before we get started, let me just ask Roland, Roland, uh, for the academy, <laughs> listen, man, you gotta give us you gotta give us some dirt on G, man. Something, something you gotta give us, give the listeners something, man. What 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 was what was this guy like growing up, man? Give give us give us one little short story, something, man. First of all, I've been watching y'all podcast, and do we hold anything back? Uh <laughs> no, he doesn't. He doesn't. <laughs> the dude, that's one of the things about our family. We pretty much an open book. Yes, that you, that get what, you see what you get, it. you get what you see. That's for sure. That's it. That's what's up, man. Hey, we were just talking, man, before you got on here, Austin. Man, we was just shooting the shooting the give in here. Roland was talking about how we didn't used to look the same uh, Not at all. when we were younger. Not exactly alike, man. And so it's the story. It's the same, Roland. You 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 the guest, man. So you can tell the story. Well, the, well, there's a story about when I first moved here. Then when I first moved here, everybody was seeing me and going, are you Kagia's brother? And I was like, yeah, how you how you know? No, and it's like, yeah, yeah. I saw you and I was like, that's got to be Kagia's brother. So I, that, I ran into that like a few times and I was like, <laughs> what is that about? So I called my mother. I said, mom, I said, everybody down here think I look like Kagia. And she was like, really, why? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> like none of us in the family saw it happen, the change. Wow. When we had started becoming each other. So and now y'all look alike twins, man. When I was when I was a baby in the hospital, um, they yeah. gave my parents the wrong child. Wow. They were in the Girl. elevator. They Girl. were in the elevator, like going to the car. And so my mom says that she keeps telling my dad, this is not my baby. And oh my goodness. Said, she says that he was like, oh, 
Come on, like, look at the hair I'm bad. You got it. That's the right one. Come on, let's go. He and says she, the he says, no, this is not my baby. And they went back upstairs. He says the opposite. He oh, wow. said he knew that baby wasn't his. So regardless, that is hilarious. They went back up and fixed the error and got me and brought me home. So Roland was just telling me when we were growing up, because we didn't look the same, and I'm so much darker than him and all that, he thought, well, maybe he the wrong baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So, so it, it was great that once, once we got older, we got we got confirmed proof. It's definitely the right baby. Really, he, there's no question, and it came in older age too. Listen, if G yeah. has his, if G colors his beard gray, then that's it. That's a, it's, no. Just yesterday, somebody he he was over to the house, and somebody pulled over, and they looked, and they were like so confused. And so when they when he left, they said, "I looked at him, and I was like, wait a minute, Roland and got some sun." That's uh, hilarious. <laughs> and so she thought it was me, just a little darker. That's it, just a little quicker. <laughs> All right. All right. So, so Roland, yo, the name of your business, man, is is Roland Song Photography. Um yeah. you did go by another moniker before, man, Capture Moments. And right. that right. the whole concept of capture moments is kind of man, what I'm after when I'm running yeah. around taking pictures. And so I have to take a thousand pictures and like every one out of a thousand, like be the best picture ever. And I'll be like, I got it. So uh right, right. Can you tell me as a professional, man, uh, when you talk about capturing moments, do you, are you like me where you just take so many pictures so you get some good ones? Or is there some mechanism by which you fall? Keep that, keep that, keep that. Look, <laughs> is that some is, this, this is me. Well, no. you know, that's, that's, that's Detroit all day playing. That's it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's Detroit all day. I don't go nowhere without Detroit. <laughs> Nowhere. Yo, that's hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So so let's 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 stay with it, man. Back to the question though, Roland. I mean, so oh, yeah, Doc. Go ahead. No, you... Well, well, no, truthfully, you're trying to make every shot a good shot. Um, but as far as the capture moments, not when you I am always looking for that moment. I think. I used to take the name very seriously, and um, I used to make sure I kept my eye on everything going. Um, there's a time when I was shooting a wedding, and I had um, a young man helping me out, and I was explaining to him about capturing the moment, and make sure you see see things before they happen. And I said, matter of fact, you see that young lady coming in the door right now? She's about to walk over to this person over here and tap her on the back, and that's your moment. And he was like, what? And sure enough, she walked in, walked around, tapped the girl on the back, and it was like, oh, and man, that's the moment. But yeah. you get to where you you looking for those things. And it was just that when she came in, I saw her eye dart over there. And I said, oh, there's something's about to happen. And those are those moments where where you can't script, you can't pose, you can't um you can't um anticipate. You know, I mean you can anticipate them. But you don't, you know, you got to watch when they happen because those are the ones that grab you by the heart. Okay. So, yeah. So you looking out to catch them. And, and oh, right. Yeah. So that's another way, you know, I get on people's nerves because I see a moment and then I tell people to freeze. And then I have to, <laughs> and then I have to go through my phone to get to the yeah. camera. And I'm not like, I'm like, okay, hold on. Hold, Hold on, hold on, don't move, don't move. <laughs> no, 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 I think I'll lose it's not organic. if I it's do organic. that. I think I'll lose clients if I do that. Matter of fact, I had to talk to a young man um, the other day doing Oakwood, and I say, catch him coming off stage, and one of the things we talked about later was, yeah, I, didn't, I don't want you to stop them. I want you to watch him play and then capture that. If you stop them, that's just a portrait. But catch the excitement coming off, and then you got something there. Yep, right. that's good. Okay, so you you're all about a picture telling a story, oh, or yeah. saying something, yeah. or capturing a moment versus yeah. you just getting a shot of somebody. Well, you want? I'm gonna be honest with you. That's it's it's different. It, it matters in um in weddings and events. 
capturing the moment is even more important. But in studio, you generally studio and for models and and for um, you know active shoots and stuff like that. You're just trying to um, pose it and make a scene and, and tell a story. So it depends on what type that you're doing. But either which way, even if you got to act it out, you're trying to capture a certain um, concept or idea or thought. You're making you want it the person that's looking at it to know what's happening, even if they don't see what's happening, you know, yeah. to feel something. So either which way, yes, you capture a moment, what is different on, on how and why. You, you Yo, know. Just tell me, uh, uh, don't call any names, but, but listen, man, Ro, let's say I know you and I, I, man, I want to hook up on a full photo set digital. I want we all my stuff it. clean and I, and I want to hook up, but, but, but every now and then you got people that know you that want to that want to hook up financially where they just like, yo, I, I want I want I want all of rolling, but I want half the cost. You know what I'm saying? So talk to me a little bit about some of the pet peeves as a photographer, not only work with people that you know well, but what are some what's some customer etiquette that you just say, look, if there's one thing you can say, folk. As photographers, we can't stand this. What, what would be that thing? Educate. This is an academy podcast, curriculum right. for growth. How can people who are coming to take photos of uh, for, from professionals like you, what what's some etiquette that we got to work on? Number one, it's our business, just like your job is yours. Yeah. So we're working to try to put food on the table, right? right. The other thing is, you get people that come. If you ask me for a discount, you ain't get. Because then I think automatically you don't respect my business, you don't respect wow. me, and you don't care about what I'm doing. I, I find it amazing yeah. that the people who I would give a discount to or say, no, nah, I got you, they pay, they insist on paying, right? And those who I give a discount to mm -hmm. who, are not, um, who are not people who care like that complain the most or want more than they were even supposed to get. So you end up having wow. more problems with people you give a discount to than the people who you would do it free for and insist on paying. Something now, people, people are amazing, man. Come to you. We, I got some. How many at the graduation? How many people walked up to me and asked me to send them a picture? Dude, I ain't me. I'm working. I need a check. Well, listen. It's, hold on. I, I found it. I found early on when I was um, shooting. I noticed everybody else was taking pictures and I looked around and I was doing the shoot um, and there's a group of people and everybody was standing around the, the artists and shooting and they was like, they look like paparazzi. And I was like, that's not who I'm trying to be, right? And so I was like, I stood away and did my thing and shot and had the right equipment and got great shots. But I learned, I said, I got to train people let people know who and what I want to be. So I I used to go around and say, nah, man, I, you don't see me with a camera. I, I, if I got a ca camera in my hand, I'm getting a check. And it's like, what? And at first people was taking offense to it, like, what? And I was like, nah, man, I don't just carry my camera. If I got a camera, I'm getting a check. So right. I, I repeated it over and over and over. But then they start seeing me everywhere, shooting, right? And I remember when Nia Long came down, this is how far back this went. Oh, Nia Long this, came by. Yep. I was on Facebook and I saw some them talking about her. And then somebody said, yo, Roland was on stage. I know he got some good shots. So I was like, yo, let me post something real quick. Thousand new people, man, on my Facebook overnight. I was like, wait a minute, what? And I was like, see, and because they was like, I know Roland got something good because they know I was working and I started getting jobs because people knew now I was professional right. and that I'm working. So right. if everybody's hiring me and giving me checks, I must be doing something good, which made people come to me even more. But if you keep throwing stuff out there free, wait, what happened when you Ooh, tell them, no, like, this is how much I cost now. All right. Let me tell you about what one of your other homeboys. All right. Um, one of your other homeboys told me, Cause I saw we was at some ministerial conference and like he was like right up by the stage, right? 
And so he was like, yo, this is my backstage pass. He said, man, you, I got this camera with me. I can get anywhere. You know, they just say, come on in. I just walked That's hilarious. In. No, 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 no. There's truth to that. I, I done got into places at Divine Brown for free. I done went to games at AM and different places, yeah. man. If you got that, that camera and that big lens, matter of fact, I got pictures at the um at the championship games with um Orlando against the Lakers. Got Kobe Bryant pictures and everything. Cause um I just came in with the I came in with the camera in my pack, but when I put it out, somebody walked up to me and said, Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to do that. And I was like, nah. I said, Yeah, I don't really have the equipment that I, I wish I had. I'm, I'm mostly just getting the wide shots. And then she's like, oh, okay. And then I went, zoop. And I was shooting all on that floor, man. No, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, and, man. And that camera gives give you some power. For those that don't know who are listening, the Von Braun is, is the major convention center downtown Huntsville where there is yeah. so many concerts and plays and graduations <laughs> and sporting events. So that's amazing that just walking in with a camera yeah. gives you well, level of access. If you, if you, if you can't get the $100 ticket, buy the $2,000 camera. <laughs> I have it already, yeah. And, and, and never pay for a ticket again. Just walk in there with it. <laughs> hey, man, it, it has worked. It has That's worked. Right. Roland, you in a small city. You're not in Atlanta. You're not in D.C. That's There's true. a lot of photographers around. Let's talk about the jealousy. Is there any jealousy? Is there any animosity among I mean, talk, talk, let's talk to me about being in a close net community where there's a hand. I mean, there's a lot of photographers. And in our community, people are listening who, who are Seven Day Adventists, uh, uh, who, who know a lot of other yeah. Adventists, Black Adventist photographers. Talk to me, man, about some of the jealousy a little bit. Well, it's funny that you say that because this is Huntsville's Black Photographers. It's a group that we had together. And um, recently we decided to do a, a picture of all of us. When we first started, it was only like nine of us. Well, 30 something mm -hmm. people came, right? It was bigger than we expected it to be. And then we started the group. We have a fan page and we try to do different things and work in the community and different things. But we, all, we also talked about maybe doing a show where we do this. But one of the things, do what you're saying, do like a, a, a reality show. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, like, yeah, yeah. The real well, photographers of Huntsville. Yeah, that's it. Who's going to be, you know, you know that guy, he going to make, he going to say some things ain't right. And this person yeah, yeah, yeah. is going to do this. And this, we got to make sure we ain't hurting each other while we're trying right. to grow together. Right. And, uh, but I, I think in any kind of artistic thing, even with musicians and things like that, why you're trying to be the best. Right. So sometimes you looking over your shoulder and you see somebody which should just motivate you to do better. To right. Do more and want to grow. Right. But sometimes there are people who just want to pull down. That's just the way the world is. Um, right. You know, so you got to be, you know, sometimes be careful um, who you do that with. I, I had a guy I wanted to work with, uh, it was a white guy who I wanted to work with a long time. His stuff was just amazing. This is years ago, and I said, uh, hey, um, when I met him, I was like, hey, um, I just want to let you know, man, I would love to work with you and shoot with you one day. And he looked at me dead in the eye and said, yeah, I'm not training nobody to take my business right now. Wow. I know who you are. And I didn't realize he even knew who I was, but he knew all about me and knew that I was growing. And he was like, nah. Wow. I ain't, I ain't helping you at all. And I was like, oh, but I, I got it in that sense. It. But sometimes we have to, as we're starting, go outside and find mentors. But in this group right now, we're trying to do different. We're trying to help each other, support each other. I mean, I, like I said, I had somebody working with me. I never worked before on, on this shoot as, as a third and everything. And I'm going to continue to try to get other people and, and pull them in. and and do right. what I can to support people coming right. up. Right. <laughs> hey, man, so we Yo. appreciate you, man, coming on, Doc. Thanks, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, tell Mama I made it. I made it to this pod. I made it to the podcast. Be fine. You here. Mama, I made it. <laughs> you here. You here. Y'all yeah. doing great stuff, man. I appreciate y'all. Right, appreciate man. it, man. Yeah. All right, take care. All right, Peace. All right now, that was, that was rolling, but um, we got another photographer in the house. Listen. The last time I went to Huntsville for Pelk Man, yep. so I set up an appointment to get uh -huh. some shots taken. Uh -huh. 
And um, I was ready, man. I, I've been seeing all these good shots. I've been seeing people, and they all coming from the same place. So I'm like, man, I got to get me some shots. Yeah. And so I went and got Gianna to take. She did a whole set with me, right? Yeah. Then when I got to Rolling House, my brother, to spend a night. Right. So this setup is right down there. And so I didn't tell him I just came from Gianna's spot, right? <laughs> <laughs> but he was like, you want to take some pictures? I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you got, you got, you got, you got two photo shoots, man. Same day. Man, listen, and, and both excellent. And, and everybody sees when we come on the, the program, man, all those yep. good shots. Man, that's that's Gianna right there. The podcast cover is 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 from Gianna Snow Photography. Yo, we've been we've been on flyers and stuff. We've been just kind of all over, man, with with our shots and stuff. We look good, man. Let me just say that we we, we look good on the pod. And, this, and this, this is my first question. Can you bring her in? This is my first question. None of us bring her in. Uh, we're, glad to, we're, we're glad to have Gianna Snow with us. What's up, G? Gianna, hey, what's, up, G? Pod. what's going on? What's going on? Go ahead, go ahead, G. All right. So here's my first question for you. All right. Do we look good or do you make us look good? That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, that's a good question. <laughs> like, are you just catching the right angles or yeah. what? That's a good you question. You know what? I think it's a combination of both. You know, you bring the swag, you know, I bring the technique, and it and magic happens, man. <laughs> that's, good. That's, good. that's a good question. It so, is. It is. So, 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 so now. Everybody I know is attractive in their own way. Yeah. So how, tell me about some of your strategies for bringing out that attractiveness, bringing out the beauty in a, in, in a, in a, in a person when they're in the studio, we know you take different kinds of photos, but in the studio, like mm -hmm. when you look at somebody, Hmm, some wheels I, I, I start turning. Tell us about the wheels. Man, um, so the first thing is just making them feel comfortable, but I want to bring out that confidence because as we all know, confidence makes us not only feel good, but look good. So a lot of times, yeah. you know, we'll hear men describe women and say, you know what, I was attracted to her confidence. Like there's a lot of beautiful people out there, but because they walk with their head held down, it's kind of like, what's going on? But there's a lot of people out there who got this swag and confidence. So I'm trying to bring that out. So I'm always just telling them how amazing they look from the time they walk in the door. I'm trying to get them to crack a natural smile, a laugh, because a forced smile is just kind of like, eh. but when you can get that genuine connection and they right. start to feel confident, it just changes their whole vibe. Like when they're yeah. like, oh, snap, they said I look beautiful. OK, let me try this. And they start bringing their own energy to the shoot, you know. Right. Because at first they're kind of like, what do I do? I don't know. You know what to do. You've been at the house practicing in front of the mirror. Bring it all. Like bring that, bring that swag to the shoot. So yeah. it, we kind of play off each other and it works. So, so, so I was going to ask just real quick. So G for the listeners, can you just tell us a little bit about your business, where you're located, how long you've been, you've been doing this So tell us about how, how Gianna Snow photography got started just real quick. Okay. So yeah, I feel like I've had a camera in my hand since I was a little girl. My dad gave me my first camera at five. So I kind of grew up with a love for photography, watching him. And, and when I got to high school, I was on the um, newspaper staff, yearbook staff. So I was developing all the pictures. So by the time I got to Oakwood University College back then, I knew I wanted to major in it. And like this was my career choice. And so yeah. I majored in it, got my degree at Andrews University. And I started my business officially probably about 10 years ago. And so That's we've been here. Up. I'm here in Huntsville. We just opened up a photography studio that you all have That's been it. to uh, yes. about a year ago. So I'm just excited about this. You know, a lot of people told me, you know, you get a lot of people who are just like, photography that's a hobby like how can you make a living off of that and so right. i feel like just from the beginning i've been pushing against odds and trying to prove something because god gave me this gift and the bible says your gifts will make room for you so i i'm just like god you're gonna do this like i've tried to get other jobs i've tried to veer off and say well maybe this will be a hobby but god keeps telling me this, this is, is your yeah this is your calling so right so how much of it is business versus um, technique, skill? Like, like you kind of have to wear both hats since you open up your own spot. So yeah. what's the ratio? 
Oh man, <laughs> it's definitely changed now that I'm running a studio and, you know, trying to build my team. So yeah. I would say it's a little more business than art and technique now, um, maybe 60, 40, just because there's just so many different things with marketing and just, and even with COVID and the pandemic, just making sure you're legally covered and you know, just all the things. I, I, I want to run this like a business, not like a hobby. And so I right. have to cover my bases and make sure that I can retire off of this. Like I can make a lifestyle. So do, do you do think it. that, you know, being because, you know, of course you're in photography, but you're also considered a, a, a small business owner having your own space, um, yeah. you know, talk to us. And you just kind of mentioned it. With this, with 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 having your own business, dealing with a lot of people, especially being in Huntsville, people that you probably know that you have to work with. Just talk to us. What what's what what's the best part of your job? Oh man, the best part of my job is getting to watch somebody come in that's not really confident, but seeing when they walk out the door, they're walking with a new swag. Like that just yeah, that just makes that's my dope. day because. <laughs> Hey, yeah. hold on. G, G smiling because he walks in with confidence <laughs> to the brim. So I know, yeah. <laughs> I know when, he, when he walked out, I know you was on cloud he couldn't nine. He hardly bro. fit his head through the door. I know. I already know. I already it's know. Part. Listen, they were gassing me up. Hey, tell us that story. Tell me, hey, yo, tell, tell, the, tell the listeners, man. G tells me this story, man. He said they were talking to me. I was thinking to myself, I was a model or something. G, G, had, G had looking real good, Scott, man. You was looking good, man. Man. It was three of them, man, and they kept gassing me up the whole time, dude. My head, yeah. I could not fit it out the door. They had to kind of on the side and get some butter on it or something, dude. They they were like, oh, what? what uh, oh, you're doing great. Oh, we don't have to tell you nothing. Oh, you, right? Right. You was looking good. You was feeling good. Yeah. No, that's yes. that's dope, though. That's dope. And I, I know that. people people that come in from all walks, whether you have couples or person who's coming in by themselves or families. I know that that, that definitely, and it's always a weird moment for the person who's getting the, getting the, the photos taken of themselves, yeah. kind of how to sit, how to stand, how to smile. And she does a good job. Every time I take shoes, shots with her, I'm always laughing. So I think that that adds to it. But you yeah, you mentioned yeah. something earlier, people just say, and I think, you know, the, the level of disrespect, you know, people say, oh, well, that's a hobby, not a career. What would you say to the young person who could be listening or somebody who's older who wants to kind of get into it? What's some advice that you would kind of give them in terms of, no, this is something you can do. This is something that, you know, if you, if you got to drive for it, do it. So I, I just believe that God gives each of us gifts for a reason. And mm. it's not like it used to be where it's like you're either a teacher or um, a secretary or a nurse. That's all you can be as a woman. Like God has just sprinkled so many different colorful yeah. gifts into his children um, and I just believe that you should go for whatever God has put in front of you. And as a child, I just had this natural affinity for cameras and for photography. And my parents, I'm so thankful for them pouring into that and giving me the cameras and sending me to school to get a degree in photography. Because you have some families who don't support that and say, no, you're going to go be a doctor. <laughs> you're going to go do this. But right. they fed into what my natural interest was. And they said, if you want to be a photographer, you can be a photographer. We'll give you everything that you need. We'll pay for your education and then you got to do it. But I was just thankful for the support and the encouragement that even though I was hearing, you can't do that. You can't have a career as a photographer. Um, my parents were there cheering me on and you can do that. And so I would say to any young person, go for your dream. You'll never be happy doing anything that's outside of what God created you to do, no matter right. how unconventional it is. Yeah. If you're a dancer, if you're a makeup artist, whatever that is, go for it. So, yeah. So, so, so what's the difference in being a um a hobby, a hustler, you know, have a hustle, <laughs> a hobby or a career? <laughs> like like cuz I know you see it in your in your photographer uh, community. So so explain yeah. the difference between that and have you been a hustler before? Have you been doing it as a hobby before? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I was just about to say, like, I was the hobbyist. I was the one that was, you know, charging $50, $100. That's a hobbyist. When this is not, you're not trying to retire off of this. You're not trying to make a real living. This is just something on the side. But once I, you know, got of age and realized I need to retire, this is what I got my degree in. 
I got to treat this like a real job. I have to price myself accordingly. I have to save. I have to, you know, not be out here buying every new camera gadget, but I got to be, you know, thoughtful in my approaches and, you know, treat it like a business. So once I started treating it like a business, the prices went up, you know, um, had to step the game up. You know, I got to present myself in a certain way. And, you know, that's just one of those things. But I'm just so thankful because now I'm able to have a studio. If I was just treating it like a hobby, I don't think I would be able to to have the studio and to move forward in my career. So I think we all start out like that, but got to take it to the professional level. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think we were talking before the show, G, uh, you, you've had a couple of viral moments. Um, yeah. You know, you you were featured on the Steve Harvey Morning Show, uh, the couple that you shot. Talk to us a little bit about that. How was that experience for you? It was amazing. You know, I you, you just treating it like any other shoot. You know, you can never predict when something's going to go viral. It's just one of those things. But I'm just shooting this older couple. They had um, met at church. And so he had um, had his wife die four years earlier. She had been single for 30 years. And so they weren't really looking, looking, but they just kind of caught each other's eye. And next thing you know, they were engaged. And so their daughters hired me to do their engagement shoot. And so I handed them a sign that said, she said yes. And I'm like, hold this up and act like you are just so excited. Elated, yeah. (laughs) And the way this man held the sign up, he was just like, oh, I can do that. So he held it up and everybody around them, we were in the park here in Huntsville and everybody started cheering because they thought he had proposed right then, but you could just tell their excitement. And so we shared the pictures and next thing you know, celebrities were sharing them. Somebody took the picture and put the caption at the top. It's never too late to find love. And so I think it was the message and the overall just visual of seeing these older, this older couple that right. really look excited to be in love. And right. it was just encouraging to people like, man, if these 70 year olds out here find in love, then maybe there's anybody. Movie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think it was encouraging. The, the, the twinkle in the eye um, yeah. that we were kind of talking about going for in the studio is a lot easier to get like the realism because you want to look at a picture and feel like it's real. Right. So it, it, and, and you talked about getting them warmed up, getting them comfortable, letting themselves out. Um, mm-hmm. Is that easier going from studio to outside to get them to warm up and loosen up? Or how, what's, what's the difference? I really just think it depends on the person, you know, mm-hmm. sometimes. And I, that's why I ask people, where are you most comfortable? And a lot of times, People say, you know what? I love outdoors. It just, it relaxes me. So I'm like, we're going outdoors. You know, some people want to be in a controlled environment in a studio, but I think it's really the same. The challenge is the same for me and, and for the person to kind of try to pull that out of them and let them know that, forget this camera's here. I want you to be yeah. yourself. I want you to be free. Right. And I, my challenge is always, I want to pull that out. I want to feel something when I look at their images. And if I don't feel something, then my the, the people who view the images won't feel something. And so that's always the goal is to capture and pull out that genuine expression. I want a real laugh. I want a real smile. I want to catch you yeah. off guard so that I can capture the essence of who you are. Not not this, like, just the cheese. Like, I want to pull it out. And that's a good challenge for me. I love the challenge. Right. Say cheese. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, man. So, so. so I, let me let me ask my partner something real quick. Yeah. Were you? I remember, and I, I I had several years of bad school pictures, just like <laughs> five straight years. Where yeah. When I finally took a good one, my mom was like, "Oh, you know, I can really show this one." <laughs> like, <laughs> Really horrible. <laughs> At some point around the age of 13 or 14, right? I went in the mirror, doc, and I practiced because you can't see yourself smile. Yeah. You know, the camera. So I yeah. practice because dude, I, I I I had some busted pictures. So um I got I got a smile that 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 I do all the time from practicing in the mirror when I was like 14 years old. <laughs> now I don't know how crazy that is. 
I don't know what the percentages no, are. Do you still do it now? Do you still use it now? Do, do, now? do, do I still use my smile? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's the one. That's the that's that's the that's the thunder right there, huh? That's the thunder right there. I, I sat there and I was like, mm, I gotta get a good smile, man, because these pictures are bad. No, I never had that issue. All of my school pictures were adorable. Uh, I was it was amazing. I never had. Listen, <laughs> you school high school. By your mom, yeah. mom didn't tell me I had bad pictures until I took a good one. They're, they're, oh, see, you're right, 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 mm. right, right, right. Yeah, they're no. right. Until I actually took a good one. And you don't really get like another try. Like, you know, when you do shoots, when you do professional photographers, not saying that those that take school pictures aren't, they not like, okay, stand here, smile here, laugh about this, talk. They they just like, all right, smile, boom, next. next. That's, yeah. That's literally how it goes. It's not the flavor, not the flavor that you get when you're when you're with somebody like Gianna. So Gianna, I gotta ask you, you know, talk to us just about as not just you, but as photographers, without calling any names, just talk to us about, and I, we mentioned this when we were talking to Roland. Look, you are a successful black female photographer uh, in the South, um, doing a lot of great things. But listen, you're in, a, you're in a city with a lot of people, with a lot of other photographers. Talk to us about, you know, is, is there a sense of competition? Is there, a, talk to us about that. What is, what is that like for you? Um, I think that's been a journey. You know, um, I think that's one of those things like when you're first starting out, you're looking at everybody else and you're trying to figure out your style. So you're like, let me emulate this and let me do this filter and let me do this, you know, style of posing. And then as I've grown, I am learning that it's community over competition and that we are all here to support each other and that we all have something unique. Um, and so that's been a journey for me, though. There have been moments and I. <laughs> it's hard, especially being a woman, because it's very competitive in the photography industry. I'm just going to say it. It is. Yeah. It's very competitive. I've shown up to shoot events and the men are glaring me down like who she thinks she is. What You know, you don't have this camera and they'll come up and ask you what you're shooting with and be like, bye. You know, just just throw wow. shade at me for no reason. And so it's been very hard to kind of say, you know what? I may not have the biggest camera. I may not have the, the newest technology, but I'm going to use what God gave me. I'm going to use my eye and I'm going to make it work. And, you know, you can't tell when you look at a picture what type of camera shot it. You know what I mean? You can't tell what brand it was or what level. of. Right. You just know it's a beautiful image. Right. And so if Ansel Adams was able to make beautiful images with a wooden camera, then I can use what I have. And I've mm-hmm. always just tried to focus on use what you have, do what you can until you get it. And so mm-hmm. God has blessed me to be able to have viral images or to have success with not the best or biggest or newest e- equipment. equipment. Right. And I just I have to go back to the fact that I believe that it's the anointing and that I believe that God has given a gift. And so you can't just rest your laurels on your equipment or on anything external you gotta you gotta tap into your gift and the source of your gift and god will take you places that people would have never thought you could go and so it is competitive but i'm learning and i think it's just a natural growth for all of us yeah that we don't compare i'm not gonna look at your gifts or compare myself because we're all we all bring something different to the table Right, yeah. If I ever try to preach like Austin, this this not gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> I, I, knew, I was gonna. Try, I was trying to beat you to it. I was gonna say it to you. I was gonna say it first. But you gave me it's not gonna happen. I tried to. I tried to write sermons like five years ago. Like for a whole year, I was trying to write and 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 do what the other guys were doing. It just it didn't it didn't work. And, and for so those who are listening, yeah. uh, uh, he just not he's not manuscript. He 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 preaches without notes, even though he takes <laughs> notes and studies. He you know he he goes off the dome and is strong. Just like I cannot go off the dome or I'll ramble uh, until the very end. So let me let me throw it out there too. <laughs> Yo, so you know, G Gianna, you know me and G, you know us well. Let's let's hypothetically throw out there we come into town, but G, we want we want the whole package. Gianna Snell photography, the makeup, the lighting. The 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 snacks we want the different types of <laughs> different types of stuff right but me and G like yo we we want we want this but because we know you we we don't want to pay 
you know, what the price says online. G, G right talk now. to us about what, yes. you know, how, how do you manage doing stuff for, for, for people that want the hookup? And what's, yeah. what's that? How, how do you manage that? That used to be a struggle for me, especially when I was treating it as a hobby, you know, and you're not valuing your work and valuing right. the, what you bring to the table. But again, you know, approaching it as a business and realizing every hookup I give is taking food out of my child's mouth or, you know, like I'm not just doing this out here just to do it. Like I, I have to I gotta meet that bottom line. I got to pay the studio rent. I got to do this. So right. I think now I just say, um, let me make a referral. There are some beginning photographers that I can refer you to that would love to take care of you. But I've just come to the realization that everybody's not my client and I'm finally okay with that. You know what I mean? Oh, wow. Before you're That's trying good. to just like yeah. meet everybody where they are right. so that you can be everybody's photographer. Right. I'm like I can't operate. I can't run a business like that. Wow. So I've asked God to send me my clients who are fine with making an investment in their portrait experience. And I have to kind of remind myself, listen, you went to school for this. You have a whole degree in photography. We didn't just pick up this camera two years ago. Like <laughs> this has been going on for a while. For a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The time that I put into each portrait and retouching and editing and making sure that it's perfect. I got to charge for that, man. You know, and before I wasn't, you know, I'm just like, oh man. But every hour that I'm on this computer is an hour away from my family. And I value that, you know, I got to charge a premium for that. If I'm not spending time with my family, I need to be compensated. And so now it's easy. It's like, okay, I'm not for you. And that is okay. There's somebody right. for you and it's okay. Right. Yeah. So hey. it doesn't bother me anymore. Because I know that there are certain budgets and price ranges, and I get that. But we can't do the hookups. You can't run a business like that. We can't run on the hookup. Gee, you can't get the hookup, man. You can't get it. You got to pay for it. Back, back, back to the art, because, you know, I'm I'm trying to come back and get some more shots. Because I, I, I took the studio shot. That, that was wonderful. That was all good. But I keep looking on the wall. I'm looking on the internet. I'm seeing all these outside shots that are bomb. So I'm like, I'm trying to bring the pretty lady. And we're trying to go out right now. Somewhere we're trying to get some good action right shots, now. you know. So, so what is the difference for you? And because it to me, it just seems like two totally different things: studio versus outside. So, can you kind of explain, like, what do you get up for? Are both of them equally exciting, or what? They're both equally exciting. I think the commonality between the two, especially when you look at my work, is that. They're mostly natural light. So even when I shoot in the studio, 90% of the time, I'm using the lights that's coming in from the window. I'm using the sun. Um, you came on an evening, and so we did some studio lights. But for the most part, I just love natural light. Like, whether I'm inside or outside, um, I'm going to only put on a flash if I absolutely have to. I love that natural light that comes in. And so I think the difference, though, is you just get a little bit more creativity, I guess, for me, being outside and just have a little bit more freedom. I love to be able to customize the experience for each person. So if they like rustic, we can go find a barn. You know, if they like urban, we can go downtown. And of course, you can't do that in the studio. And so I just love the, at the opportunity to be flexible and to create something customized just for them, that the location and everything was picked out just for their their personalities, their outfits and all of that. So it just feels unique, you know, feels special. So what about when uh, the customer is wrong? Like, what do you mean? You know, like what they want is really not going to come off right. Like, does okay. that happen? Like, yeah, it does. And so how, how do you, how do you explain to them that? No, I think we're going to do it this way. So. <laughs> <laughs> I have to assert my expertise and just say, you know what, with what you're trying to do and the vision that you share with me, I think it would be best if we go this direction. And nine times out of 10, they are just, they trust me. They're like, okay, if you say that, then let's go with it. So. Is it because they're paying you? Like, so if they were paying you $50, they'd probably be trying to give you more instructions. Correct. 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 
And that's where I had to build up that confidence as, you know, as a professional, as the expert, you know, because sometimes you just are like, I don't know. But no, I have to kind of lead and guide and say, listen, I think this will be amazing. Let's let's do this. And they're usually excited to try something new and go for it. So. Hey, yeah. Jesus is trying to get you ready to tell him that he's going to have a bad idea when he comes to from outside. He, he's yeah. trying to find out your tips. When she starts saying, maybe we should do something over here, man, instead. <laughs> I, listen, G, I'm not scared to give my ideas. I get, yeah. so, many ideas. I get so many notes. Bring them. Bring them. I'm trying to look. I got ideas about podcasts. I got ideas about titles. Man, I, I got 12 ideas for everyone that gets through. So. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I'll this, come with this podcast right. is almost named two guys and smart people or something like that. It was it, it, was, <laughs> it was it was named it was gonna be named a bunch of stuff. We oh, were gonna God. name our worship experience pajama and worship party. Listen, y'all, I just want y'all to know, but I will say, <laughs> I will say there's there's always gonna be the idea in the pot that takes it to the next level. So I can't even front. And that's yeah. what that's the good thing about having a partner. G, G, G is is the idea man and he gets it right. And what's funny is now people see his pictures from the photography when we do stuff in flyers guys who make it they will use his picture from gianna snell photography as their promo stuff for their flyers i'm on the <laughs> flyer too but right. they don't care about me it's just his face and he's smiling because he's laughing because he knows it's true when you go online his face is literally everywhere. <laughs> that's, that's i practice my smile yeah see mm, <laughs> that's true okay that's it. it's a stunner right there <laughs> Hey, so, so G, you know, we got, I want to ask you this too. And I know we're wrapping up. I, I want to know what's one thing that you could tell clients, future clients or clients that you always get. What's one thing like, yo, like, can you, I need you to do this or, or what you want clients to be more on point with. Practice your smile. Now I'm just there it, is. <laughs> <laughs> it works for Kagia. So I don't know. Practice it before but, you come to me. <laughs> right. Um, you know, that's such a good question. I was just trying to figure that out. Um, I would just like, say I, I know I see a lot of your stuff and I don't I'm like, I know that's Gianna, but they won't they won't put the ad on there, or I know other photographers work, and I'm just like, yo, shout <laughs> them out because they made you look <laughs> ten times better. <laughs> you, <laughs> you ain't showing I mean, no love. <laughs> right. No, that is definitely a photographer pet peeve just across the board like when a uh, when a client posts the picture and there's no cred no no, no love no cred. and, yeah, and the joint's yeah. blowing up everybody's like dang okay okay and you're like dang hello hello can i get right. a what what because you, you know? took the photo and you edited it <laughs> right right and so that is that is definitely a pet peeve um but i just think coming and just being open. Like, I love it when clients are just like, whatever you want to do, let's do it. Like, just be open, you know, be, be willing to try something. So sometimes, you know, that may mean laying on the floor or trying a different angle or whatever that may be, you know, laying in the grass, you know, and that's one of the reasons why that's I love. Gonna be, that's you going to be, you're going to be on the grass <laughs> laying. That's, that's going to, she's setting you up. <laughs> He's setting you up, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> because <laughs> right as a photographer, we're artists too. Like we're not just okay. Like you said, like thank you next, thank you next. Like there's this creative vibe that comes out, and sometimes on the spot, you're just like, you know what? Let's go over there to that cornfield, and people be like, right. uh, wait a minute. <laughs> right, right, so, right. and that's fine. But I love it when people are just down for anything. Like, I feel like that's when magic happens when you just down for whatever. Let's do it. Let's make so, let's make magic. So so all right, you got about. I paid for a certain number of pictures from you. I plan on getting I think two or three. End up getting five, and then I wanted to get three more. Um, there's a set right that I can go back and I can still get some of my pictures that I took with you. But yeah. you took more pictures than that. So yeah. so so you took like a thousand pictures, or whatever. You're like click, 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 and I'll say, uh, 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 right? So, <laughs> so so um tell me about the process of because you don't want to touch up every picture. What's the process of like choosing the ones you're gonna show the client? Okay, so I will say during the process, 
I think that's a part of my process of making the person feel amazing is to keep clicking. Because if you just click one time, they're just like, okay, I guess that was. <laughs> but when they hear that click, keep going, like that's, I think that's one of my little ninja strategies where I'm using that to make them be like, man, okay, I must be killing it. They can't stop taking pictures. And so like, I love just clicking. I, I you know, just do that to just make them feel amazing. And then um, the process is I'm taking out any blinks, anything that's not showing genuine emotion, genuine connection or expression. If it's a right. fake smile, I'm taking it out. If it's a blink, I'm taking it out. If it's slightly blurry, sometimes when you're moving or the client's moving, you got a little shake or blur. So those are the main three things that I'm taking out. Other than that, I am showing only the best, obviously, only the best images to the client so that they can have a good selection to choose from. But I don't want to overwhelm them. Like, I don't want you to sit there and look through 200 pictures. I want to make Not it easier much. for you. But yeah, I thought you would look at yourself 200 different times, though. You... You you, you I, yeah he was he was, he was trying to, like he trying to get all his pictures he I just a little you got you got a thousand followers for me let me get let me get them let me get them about <laughs> three weeks to do pictures man it took me a long time yo that's See? funny and that I only sent you what how many 20, 30? maybe thirty maybe twenty five yeah. thirty but yeah, I it narrowed it down work. a lot and I'm I'm still I'm still <laughs> got an eye on a few of them so. Um, and I'm surprised that you leave pictures in that you would think, well, I would have thought we're just, we just having fun pictures, but you leave those in there as part of the set. Right. And I like I know that though. <laughs> one in our intro where he's laughing and yeah. that is perfect for the intro. Yeah, see, everything doesn't have to be stoic, you know, take a picture. Right. I don't take bad pictures. I've been trying to say that to you. I don't take bad pictures. They're all good. G, we have a thousand pictures of me, and none of them are bad. Just so, that. <laughs> whatever. And listeners, make sure you check the AP to check out my smile on our Facebook page. <laughs> so what's the what's the, what's your favorite picture? Um, I, 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 and listen, favorite shoe, or favorite shoe, maybe. You, you cannot say. All right, the rules are: you can't say they're like my children. I don't have any favorites. All right, they're not your children; they're pictures. Yeah, All give right. us the best shoot you've done that you would that you or one of your favorite shoots. Let's do that. Ah, man. I love my shoots with Micah Logan, ML6, as she's known in the city. ML6. Um, that's our mutual cousin, Austin. Um, a couple years back, we started doing her breast cancer awareness. She, she's a breast cancer survivor. And I think the favorite one is the smoke, the pink smoke. Um, yep. We, we ordered some too. smoke bombs. And it's so funny because she's another one that's just down for whatever. She show. I just told her to get something pink, get her makeup done, and just show up. And so she's like, "What am I supposed?" What? And I was like, "Hold this bomb, and just wave it around, and don't don't let it get in your face." Because of course, this smoke is billowing into her face. So I'm right. amazed that she was able to do that so gracefully. Because we were even like, <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> and she's just waving it around, just doing her thing. But she's down for whatever. Like, I was like, you're going to be holding the bomb? She's like, okay, whatever. Like, give yeah. me the bomb. <laughs> you know how she is. And so, but, but it came out beautifully. And I think it was just another way to express, you know, that she's a warrior. She's a survivor. And one of my passions is to tell people stories, not just present the picture, but tell their story. I believe everybody has a story. Everybody's overcome something. And I think that makes the image even more powerful when you know, like, why is she holding pink smoke? Oh, okay. She just ain't out here doing this to look cute. Like, she's a warrior. Right. She survived. Right. And so I love doing that for every shoot. It, it doesn't matter because everybody has a story. So I just, that that's one of my favorites. Yo, just the way the light and everything. You get, all of that. You, get, you get the experience. You get all of it. Smoke bombs <laughs> and... Different backgrounds. <laughs> the gears be laying on the floor in the grass in the woods. You can get it. You can get it all. But you so, know what? I think the pressure has been there because after the two viral shoots, you know, people were like, "Yo, I want to go viral," and I was like, "Wait, wait, wait, time out. <laughs> like, I can't control that. You know, we're gonna try to right. do our best to give you an amazing experience, but we can't make anybody go viral. I had people hit me up. How do you go viral? What are the steps? I'm like. Yeah, I don't know. You know, 
So no Do pressure there. No, no pressure. No, no, no. <laughs> There's a lot of good work out there, but it's just it's just one of those things that just randomly happens. Yeah. So it's cool. Hey G, you can't go famous just yet, man. Just keep smile, keep practicing that smile though, bro. It's hey. it's coming. <laughs> You know, it wasn't it wasn't hard with Gianna, but sometimes it is hard because it's just like walking when you know everybody's looking at you walk. It, you know how to walk, but if you know there's ten thousand people watching you walk, yeah. you start getting self conscious about your walk, and you kind of overcome That's that. True. The same thing is taking pictures. Um, you know how to smile. You've been smiling. That's why she got to get you to forget almost <laughs> that you take pictures. That's you right. Get yeah. Smiling. But now you kind of self conscious. Is it is this working right? Or is this how does this look? You know, <laughs> that's why I keep on clicking through through all the ratchet smiles, the ones that are like, "Whoa!" I just keep yeah. on clicking, like, "Oh, you're doing amazing! Keep it coming!" You know, and just guide them through it so that then we'll get we'll get the smile. It'll come out. <laughs> yeah, no, no no lipstick on the teeth, pictures. None of that, oh, man. Yeah. And if there is, man, that's why we got Photoshop, man. I got you. I got you. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Last question. Well, this is my last question. All right. Go ahead. So when you're touching pictures up, like sometimes when you look at work, and I guess it's probably work that's not that good, it looked like somebody like buffed the person, right? Like they yeah. kind of, it don't yeah. look real. Like, so, yeah. so when you touch up a picture, you know, how do you keep yourself from touching up too much? I mean, because, you know, you don't want it to look like a porcelain doll. You want the person to Correct. look you. Yeah, that's actually one of my pet peeves, just personally. Like, I want you to look like you. Uh, I want your skin to look the color of the skin. I want it to look the same texture. And so that's one of the things I spend a lot of time on, trying to make sure that it is natural. But um, one of the things that helps, oddly enough, because a lot of times when you're Zooming and doing that detailed work, you're zoomed in on that picture. Like it's at 300%. And so I'm just like, all I see is this. But I think one of the things that has helped is to pull it back and make it a thumbnail size and look and see at a thumbnail size, does it look too smooth or does it look good? And that is what has helped me is to just kind of zoom back out. And that's when I know, okay, I think we're good. I think we got it to a good level because you don't want that porcelain fake skin look. That's not cool. <laughs> okay, last question. Mm -hmm. All right, last question. Who, who, I was going to say alive or dead, but no. Who alive is your dream photo session? Like, anybody Ooh. in the world? Whoa. You know what? I'm going to say Felicia Reed. She is a photographer in Texas. And she just knows how to photograph women. And she every before every shoot, she dances with the client and she posts the videos. And it's just it just looks like fun. Wow. I, I know it would be amazing session. So I've already contacted her. I was like, You're you're photographing me for my 40th birthday. COVID happened, but that's still on my bucket list. I gotta get down to in that's front of Felicia Reed's camera. <laughs> hey Austin, she answered a great question, but another question. I wanted to know who you want to take pictures of. Like, who oh, is you? Right. Oh, that's, that's easy. Barack and Michelle. Barack. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say, that's, that's a no-brainer. I got that written in my, in my closet, man. Yeah, I got that Michelle. written in my bucket list. Like, Michelle I want to Barack, photograph, man. I want a session with them, not just them making a speech. Like, I want a portrait session with them where we can yep. just take time and just capture their emotion and their love, man. I would love that. Absolutely, absolutely. Michelle and Barack. Well, yo, G, oh, tell Michelle us. and Barack, if y'all are listening, hit me up. Yeah, they going they gonna. <laughs> first of all, they gonna hear this. They gonna hear this. They gonna hear this. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yo, so G, tell tell everybody who's watching or who goes to our Facebook page or YouTube. How do we get in contact with you? How do we book our next yeah. the next shoot? Where do we go? How can we get you? Yo, go to my website, giannasnellphotography .com. Um, Hit me up on the inquiry. We can take care of you. Um, I'm also on Instagram, Gianna Snell Photography, and I'm on Facebook, Gianna Snell Photography. So any of those spots, definitely hit me up. You can also email me at Gianna at GiannaSnellPhotography.com. So those who are, are listening, watching us uh, on our YouTube, Facebook, if you're on uh, iTunes or Spotify, uh, wherever you are, listen, make sure you share this. Hit the like button. Go to our page, uh, the Academy Podcast on YouTube and on on 
on Facebook. You can check out all of our latest up episodes. And of course, you can be here next time with us on the Academy Podcast. Y'all take care. You've been listening to the Academy Podcast with Austin and G. Hit the subscribe button and come again. You can find us on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and of course, Facebook. Oh, yeah. And if you know someone who could use the information you just gained, take a minute to share. Much love from the AP. Peace.